Hello guys, and welcome back to yet another episode of Sam's Motor Machine. As you may have seen already, this Range Rover recently blasted past its 200,000 mile mark. Auto destruct sequence activated. And all jokes aside, it's really taken it in its stride. To celebrate this occasion and 12 months of my ownership, I'm going to give you all the gruesome detail on every little cost I've had, and I'm going to tot up every single expense I've had over the last 12 months to run this car. So strap in, it's going to be a good one. So I've actually already done one of these videos, and the first one was done at three months ownership back in April 2021. If you haven't seen that video already, click the link up here, or here or somewhere, to see that first, because that takes into account the first three months of ownership before we get to this video. This video will cover everything from then, April 2021, until now, so the first 12 months basically. So let's take that total from the first video, £8,332 if I remember correctly, and we'll take that as our starting point for the video. Before we do though, if you're at all interested in Land Rover or Range Rover videos, please do hit that subscribe button down below, because at this point a huge proportion of my views come from unsubscribed viewers, so, so do yourself and the channel a favour and hit that subscribe button down below. Cheers. So, the next expense I had after that April video was a height sensor for the suspension and a rain sensor for the windscreen wipers and uh, there's also a light sensor for the headlights. I had to replace the height sensor because the Range Rover threw up a adaptive dynamics fault on the dashboard. When I plugged into it with my code reader, it pointed towards the rear left height sensor being faulty. That height sensor was £67.49p from Bearmac, and fitting it resolved the issue, which was good. At the same time, I fitted a replacement rain sensor, uh, as the rain sensing wipers weren't working correctly on the Range Rover. They were uh, just functioning as a normal um, intermittent wiper system, which this car is supposed to have automatic, so I knew something was wrong there. The car also had a persistent fault on the IID tool, that said something about a communication error with the brain sensing module there on the windscreen. Um, so I figured I'd replace the sensor and see what happened. Unfortunately, it didn't actually cure the issue and the fault remained the same and the wipers didn't, didn't uh, start working properly. A few weeks later, the issue came to me as I was searching through the Facebook forums and the uh, online Range Rover owners forums and it turned out it was actually a wiring fault beneath the carpet under this driver's uh, carpet. Uh, which I rectified in another video a bit later on when I was doing the interior. So replacing the rain sensor was likely not really required, but I'm going to include the cost on here anyway, because it's kind of like part of my diagnostic uh, costs for fixing the vehicle. So that was 25 quid off eBay second hand. So the next cost on the Range Rover was another one of those not really necessary but very nice to do upgrades, uh, and that was the interior on the Range Rover. Those of you that have been watching the channel from when I first got the Range Rover will have seen how bad the interior was on this car when I first got it. In particular, this seat, the driver's seat, was really, really bad. It had a huge hole in the side of it and a big chunk of foam missing out of it, and the leather was just generally in very bad condition. So I started looking for a replacement seat and door card, and thankfully, on that day, the Range Rover gods were smiling down upon me because one of my subscribers, James, had actually bought a complete autobiography interior for his L322. His car's a Vogue like mine, and it's actually exactly the same colour combination that mine is, with the black exterior, ivory leather, and black carpets and things like that. So yeah, James bought this full autobiography interior, and I think he actually mainly wanted it just because he wanted the cool seats in his car, because his car being a Vogue like mine, it only came with heated seats from the factory. So anyway, James got in contact with me and offered me his old seats. Now my car and James's were originally fitted with ivory door cards that would match the ivory seats and interior. However, the interior that James bought, this autobiography one, the seats were half black and half ivory, and the door cards that came with it were actually fully black, which are these ones here. As James just wanted the cooled seats part of the uh, autobiography interior, he actually sold me the autobiography door cards with his old seats. That's what I've ended up with in this car. At the time, I wasn't 100% sure that that colour combination would work with the ivory leather and the black door cards, but as it turned out, it worked really, really well, and I'm really pleased with the way the car looks now on the inside. The seats alone made a huge difference to the interior of the car. This seat's way more comfortable than the original one, which was kind of collapsed on one side, um, and the door cards and everything else just freshened up the interior and really shaved off like 100,000 miles off the interior of this car. So the price I paid for that big improvement to the Range Rover's interior was only £300. I have to say thanks to James again for that because uh, he did me a really good deal on that. 
I should say, James actually has his own YouTube channel and he has some uh, really good L322 content on there as well. So I'll put a link in the description or a card up here if I can for you guys to go and check it out. But yeah, please do, it's really good. After that, it was time to get a job done that I'd been wanting to do for ages. And that, of course, was the transmission service for the ZF8HP gearbox. Now, initially, I was actually planning to do this job myself. I was going to buy the oil and buy the filter, uh, drop the oil on my driveway, and do the service myself. You can buy the correct Lifeguard 8 oil and filter for this car on eBay or quite a few other places, um, but it's not cheap. It's quite expensive for the whole kit, and you can pay probably three or 350 quid just for the oil and filter itself. However, thankfully, I was pointed in the direction of one Mr. Ian Bodsworth of Updates by Bodsey uh, by a few different people on the Facebook forums and on the Range Rover Owners forums. So I got in contact with Ian and he agreed to come down to my, my then driveway in Leamington Spa and plug the Range Rover into his Mega Flush machine. Now the advantage of the Mega Flush was that it replaces all the oil in the transmission system. So whereas with a normal oil drop, you can only change really six or seven litres of oil, um, with Ian's machine and his flushing machine, his flushing capabilities, he can replace up to about 10 litres of oil because he's able to flush through the oil that's in the torque converter and in the transmission cooler as well, which you just can't do by dropping the oil out of the sump. So Ian's price for this at the time was £340 for the 8HP gearbox on this car, and to date is probably still some of the best money I've spent on this car. I must point out though that if you want to get an up-to-date price for that, you've got to speak to Ian himself because it does vary from vehicle model to model and also over time its prices are likely to change as well. So yeah, get in contact with Ian if you want to get that done to your car, but from my point of view, I really highly recommend it. So the next item I bought for the Range Rover still hasn't actually been fitted yet, and that will be the air conditioning compressor. So yeah, back in the summer of 2021, I realised when the weather got really hot that the air conditioning wasn't working properly in the Range Rover. I actually bought a set of air conditioning gauges to check the pressures in the system and I actually found out it was, it was gassed up correctly, it had the right amount of gas in the system. But when the compressor was turned on there was no change to the uh, pressures in the system which indicates a problem with either the compressor valve or the compressor itself. So I started looking online to find a replacement compressor. Land Rover will charge you more than £400 for the genuine item. But after a bit of hunting I managed to pick up a Nissan's 890123 which is the actual correct item and Nissan's actually made the original genuine items £459.99 p on eBay. Brand new. Now, although it doesn't come in a genuine Land Rover box, Nissans actually do make the genuine article there, the OEM for Land Rover that made the compressor when uh, the vehicles were new. So that was a pretty nice saving to get. That compressor, the Nissan's 890123, is actually uh, used on quite a few different JLR vehicles as well, so I think a few different Range Rovers and maybe a few, a few Jaguars as well. So if you're in the market for a new compressor for your, for your JLR vehicle, make sure you check out what the original OEM part number is and search for that directly rather than the Land Rover part number. I'm planning to get that fitted before the warm weather starts again this year, so sometime this spring hopefully, and that'll be a pretty good video because I think it's going to be a fairly big strip down again. After that, in the last video I filmed in the UK before moving here to Ireland, I fitted a tailgate strip from Powerful UK, that was £28, uh, and I also fitted a new tow bar, uh, which was from a uh, fabricator on eBay, uh, which fits into the receiver hitch on the back. Uh, that was £100 including delivery. That tow bar has been put to really good use, as you'll see in one of my previous videos, and I actually used it to tow all of my stuff over here to, to Ireland in one go behind the Range Rover. And it just feels a lot more secure to me than that, that quick release, release one did. Next up was a big job that I did recently, but shockingly, I didn't film it. That's right, I've been cheating on you guys. Basically, shortly after moving here to Ireland, I, ne I needed to get the Range Rover through its NCT, which is the Irish equivalent of the MOT. It's actually a fair bit stricter than an MOT, um, and it's not carried out at a garage, but at a dedicated test centre. So before it went, I wanted to make sure it was completely up to scratch, so it would go through first time. So one of the things that I knew was going to be coming up on the Range Rover that I needed to do before its next MOT was going to be the rear subframe bushes and also the two rose joints on each side that connect the rear hubs to the suspension arms. Uh, all four of those had a bit of play in my car. So, so I ordered all those bits from a good European website called Win Parts, and all that lot sent me back 224 euros, or about 187 pounds. As some of you guys will probably know, those rear subframe bushes are a pretty nasty job, especially doing them on your driveway. Uh, they're, they're huge, great big bushes that are really reluctant to be pushed out or be pushed back in again. So 
it was good to get it done, but I wouldn't really want to do it again on my driveway. But it was worth it because after that the Range Rover sailed through his NCT with no advisories and the NCT tester actually remarked when he gave me the keys back what a lovely Jeep it was. So that was nice. So more recently I've had another one of those nice to have but not strictly necessary upgrades on the Range Rover and you guys saw me fit that Osram LED light bar on the front. I also fitted those upgraded reverse light spotlights on the back and including all the bits, to, bits and bobs to fit it, like the relay and wiring and stuff, let's call it about 150 quid in total. You guys can watch the video by clicking the link up here if you haven't seen it already. And most recently, I've been building up a bit of a collection in the hallway in the house of bits that I need to get done to the Range Rover. The first item I've got in the hallway at the moment is related to a bit of a mishap that happened a while ago when the alternator failed on the Range Rover. Do you guys remember when my alternator blew up? Well yeah, at that time it also tried to destroy the battery as well. So the battery got dragged down to about 3 volts at the time, which as you guys will know is really bad for any battery. It did seem to recover okay and take a charge again, but ever since then I've been a bit suspect of it. And the Range Rover doesn't jump into life with the same gusto as it used to when I first got it. The diesel preheater also struggles to run for the full 20 minutes as it's supposed to. And all these things to me point to a battery that's not quite in at full health. It hasn't actually let me down yet, but be on the safe side I've decided to replace it anyway. So I ordered a new 019 AGM battery from Halfords and with my trade card that sent me back about 180 euros. Oh f he's gone the wrong way. Which is about 150 quid. It's also true that starting an engine with reduced battery voltage can cause damage to the contacts in the starter motor so changing this now might actually save me money in the long run. I've also got a full engine service kit which sent me back about 60 quid and I've also got transfer box oils and dif differential oils for front and rear uh, to do as well and that was about another 50 quid on top. I'm always slightly hesitant to include service costs in these totting up videos because it's something that you have to do on every car really and it's not really specific to the Range Rover but I'll include them in the total anyway for completeness. I think at that point that brings us pretty much bang up to date. So if we add all those things since April up, that gives us a total of £1,617.48. And if we add that to our previous total of £8,332, that gives us a grand total of £9,949.48p. So even after all that, all those mods and fixes and upgrades, we still haven't broken the £10,000 mark with the Range Rover, including the purchase price. That's pretty awesome actually, and I'm pretty chuffed with that. What do you guys reckon then? Has it been worth it, or am I completely mad? To me, that really doesn't seem that bad at all. And if we actually do some proper man maths and we take into account the actual value that I've added to the Range Rover by doing all these fixes and improvements, the total cost of ownership for this car for a year is actually very, very affordable. Yes, I could probably have had a cheaper ownership experience if I bought like a 10-year-old Land Cruiser or Hilux or something along those lines, but where would the fun have been in that? And of course, I'd have been driving a far inferior vehicle to the Range Rover, well, in my eyes anyway. As I mentioned in the last one of these totting up videos, there's still a plethora of upgrades and improvements and mods that I want to do to the Range Rover laid out ahead of us. And I'm hoping this year we can really start to get some of those awesome overland mods, like a roof rack, maybe a front bumper upgrade fitted to the Range Rover this year. Maybe even a roof tent. And apart from that, I just want to get out and about in the Range Rover, exploring as much of Ireland as I can this year maybe even go further afield than that. Why don't we take a trip to the Pyrenees or maybe even explore the northern reaches of Norway? It's all possible with the Range Rover. But that's about going to wrap it up for this video guys. If you enjoyed it please leave a like and leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time on Sam's Motor Machine. Cheers.